You're not going to want to miss this episode of The AI Show. We're going to talk about the latest from Azure Form Recognizer with my friend Vinod. Make sure you tune in. Hello and welcome to this episode of The AI Show. We're talking about the latest from Azure Form Recognizer with our friend Vinod Kirpad. How you doing, my friend? Why don't you introduce yourself? Hey, thanks, Seth. It's great to be on the show. I'm Vinod Karpat. I'm a product manager uh, working on Form Recognizer. Uh, and really excited to be here today to talk to you about all the new things that we're releasing within Form Recognizer with the new 3.0 GA API. Fantastic. Okay. So let's just set a level playing field here. For those that don't know about Form Recognizer, can you give us a 30 second elevator pitch? Definitely. So Form Recognizer has a number of different capabilities. Think about it as starting with OCR, you can extract all the, the content that you want from any of the document types that you're dealing with. Uh, we even support a few different office type documents, for example, uh, uh, Word and PowerPoint. Those are still preview features, but, but those are available for you to use within Form Recognizer today. Uh, in, in, the, in the GA version of the API, we, we support PowerPoint as an example. Uh, I'm sorry, we support PDF documents and uh, our images. And so you can extract text and, uh, and content from each of those different types of documents that you're dealing with. As you go up the stack of form recognizer capabilities, you can extract a number of different semantic elements from the document as well. Things like layout, tables, selection marks, uh, you know, paragraphs, paragraph rows. Those are all sort of capabilities that we have as part of the layout API. Uh, if you go further up, you can uh, even use the general document API, which is think about it as a document agnostic model that, that extracts key value pairs from a document. You know, you have a number of these common uh, types of forms. For example, you fill out a form at a doctor's office where you know, there's a number of different questions, which is like, you know, your name, age, date of birth, you know, like uh, past symptoms and things like that. And it's able to process some of these documents without really needing you to build any sort of a custom model because it can extract all the different key value pairs that you need from each of these different document types that you can use in your automation workflows. Um, and then moving on, we have a, a few really specific document specific models, which are things like uh, an invoice model or a receipt model. We even have released now a W2 model as well as health insurance cards. And so we have a number of these different pre-built model types which are really targeted at extracting the specific key value pairs that you expect to see in each of these different document types. Uh, yeah. And finally, if, if none of these uh, sort of address any of your needs, we have a set of custom capabilities and we have two different types of custom models that you can use. One is called a template model, which is essentially intended for documents that have a very fixed and defined visual template. And then we have a new neural model now, which is also part of our GA release. And, and neural models allow you to extract data from unstructured documents as well. So you can extract, for example, tables, layout information, as well as key value pairs from unstructured documents. And so Form Recognizer is intended to serve all of your document automation and document processing needs, starting from simple text extraction all the way to really specific document type sort of scenarios that you might want to deal with. And this is really cool because it, like, it's not OCR is at the base. It's not just OCR. And then you have structure and then you have specific structure and then you have generic structure to whatever it is that you want to do. Am I getting this right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's perfect, right? Because essentially what we have is, is uh, I like to describe it as three sets of capabilities, right? So you have OCR, which is essentially extracting text from a document. Then you have these document agnostic models, which are really intended to extract structure as well as key value pairs from a document, but Got they don't it. really care whether it's a document of uh, whether it's a receipt, an invoice, or, or a W2 uh, or, or a contract, right? So it's it's all it's all the same for, from a from a document agnostic model perspective. Um, and finally we have these document specific model types, right? Which are which are either pre-built document model types, which are essentially a model that that Microsoft's trained based on data we've acquired which are things like the invoice, W2, and, and things like that. Or you could go bring your own data, label it, and use a custom model to extract those uh, those key value pairs or fields that you're looking for from these documents. I love it. So what's the latest? So I know there's got to be some kind of announcement that you're making. What's the latest uh, since we've talked last? Yeah, so I think what I'd like to do is actually walk you through uh, a quick update of what uh, what's contained in the new 3.0 generally available API, because this API is now generally available and it, it's got a lot of functionality that we've added in, uh, essentially a number of different things that we've done over the past year. So let me share my screen and, and, and walk you through what, what we're talking about here. Let's do I, it. Your screen is shared and we're ready to go. Let's take a look. Perfect. So I'm going to start off by talking 
primarily about the studio first, right? And the studio is essentially the, uh, the best experience that you can have with Form Recognizer today. We've taken a lot of the feedback that you had about like the sample labeling tool and things like that in the past and, and really revamped the experience of the studio. Uh, so the studio allows you to do three specific things, right? First is you can explore each of the different model types, right? So uh, as a simple example, I can go ahead and click on read here. Uh, this will open the read API. I can go ahead and click analyze. Uh, and now I have a few sample documents here that I can choose from, or I could bring my own document in uh, and, and upload a, a specific document that I want to try this out with and get the outputs from each of these models. So you can see here that in addition to sort of like the uh, sample documents that I've got, I've got the output now, um, and you can see I've got each of these paragraphs identified and, and I can take each of the content elements that I want from here. Uh, so the studio, for example, is a great way for you to go try out each of these models. So, so let's go take, take a look at layout because layout is another model that, that got updated as part of our V3 API. And layout, if you remember uh, from, from prior years, if you've used layout in the past, it usually extracts uh, text, selection marks, as well as uh, 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 tables. With this new update, you'll notice that layout now does something a lot more specific, right? So if you think about all the challenges you have with uh, document segmentation and finer grain detail within a document, you can get those answers to, to some of the questions that you have about documents you're dealing with. So we tell you what the paragraphs are, but we also give you a specific role for each of these paragraphs. So you can see in this case, uh, the paragraph for the news today is essentially a type of type is a title type of uh, of paragraph. So so you you're not only you're getting all of the paragraphs identified, but you're also getting each of the roles associated with, with those paragraphs. In addition to that, obviously layout also does all the things that it's been doing for for the for, for the last few years, which is extracting uh, selection marks as well as tables, and we're continuing to improve that experience as well, right? So for example, you can get uh, you know tables as an example of 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 That's things so cool. like tabular data, it's just get extracted out of the document with no real training required, right? So this is just the layout model doing its thing at this point. This is um, this is amazing. So I, before you go, basically yeah. this is a place where someone can go and just try it out on any kind of document to see what the base stuff does. And there, it does analysis of unstructured and structured documents, correct? Exactly, right? Uh, so so Seth, you hit the, you hit the nail on the head. The studio is essentially a, a, think of it as a playground, right? So you can go in, you know, select a particular model that you want to try out, uh, analyze a specific document. Like I said, you could you could use one of the sample documents that are in the studio, or you could go ahead and bring in your own document, analyze it, validate that the results that the model is able to produce meets your expectations, and, and that's what you'd want to use. And, and not just that, right? The studio takes it one step further because it actually shows you what the result is in JSON as well and gives you a sample example of how you might want to use uh, one of the uh, language specific SDK elements. Uh, in this case, this is a Python sample that walks you through how you might want to use uh, this particular model using the, using the SDK in anything that you're building as an application for yourself. Love it. Yeah, so uh, the, the general document example here that I have on the screen, walks you through uh, the capabilities of the general document model, which is essentially extracting key value pairs from each of these different documents, right? Uh, so like, like I mentioned earlier, this is a pre-trained model. You don't need to train anything. It just understands documents and is able to extract all the different key value pairs that it's able to find from within each of these documents. Uh, there's a few other examples. You, you're welcome to go ahead and give it a try, uh, but that's essentially the Form Recognizer Studio in a nutshell. It gives you all of these different capabilities, but but it brings out each of these things in a way that's that's really easy for you to to try out, validate that it works, and then take it and productionize it within within the applications that you're building. Awesome, awesome. And now this is the now GA'd, so anyone can can use this. Is this correct? That's correct. So it's, so, so there's two real components that that I want to talk about. Right, okay. the studio itself is how you how you interact with the with the form recognizer resource or the form recognizer APIs. Uh, and then there's the underlying APIs itself, right? So obviously the studio is GA, so are the underlying APIs. And so we just talked a little bit about the studio. Let's let's sort of like dive into each of the different capability areas maybe and, and spend a couple minutes like walking through some of the updates because there's a lot to unpack here in terms of like all the different updates that, that are available with the form recognizer today. Let's do it, let's dive in. Right, uh, so like, like we just looked at the general document model, like think of this as a, 
a really good start to analyzing any any specific document type, right? So you can bring in any document that has key value pairs or form fields in it, uh, click analyze, and now you're able to, to get the output that describes each of the different key value pairs that are extracted as part of this document. Uh, so you'll see here that, that for example, you know, if, as, as I hover over some of these key value pairs, you'll see uh, the proposed start date as well as the, the specific value and so forth, right? So each of these elements is now extracted for you without you having to do anything more than essentially just submit this document as an API request to the API. So that's key value pairs or, or, or general document model. Uh, this model continues to improve. It can, it can today extract all the things that layout can as well as these key value pairs. So for example, you'll see that you, uh, some of these things like, like tables that are extracted as part of the layout are also available as part of the output. But in addition to the output from layout, you are, you're getting the key value pairs as well. That's you awesome. also have selection marks. And so you can see whether each of these selection marks are selected or unselected. And, and that's something that, that is just native to the model. It, it's just able to extract all this uh, information from any of these document types that, that it's processing. Um, cool. In addition to this, uh, the, the, the key area that I wanted to really highlight in terms of what's new with, uh, with uh, the new 3.0 API is we've now added a new model type called the custom neural model. And custom neural models are different from uh, traditional uh, custom template models that you've trained in the past because they really enable you to use form recognizer with unstructured documents. Uh, so as an example, I'll walk you through a quick uh, sort of a labeling example of like what, what we typically do is uh, you need to come into the Form Recognizer Studio, set up a new project, go ahead and label a few documents for, for what you're trying to extract, right? And the labeling process is super simple. It's, it's intuitive. All you need to do is go select the text that you want and go ahead and label the document, right? So let me let me show you what that experience looks like. Um, I'm going to zoom in just a little bit uh, so, so we get a better view of, of what's going on here. Uh, you'll see that I have a few different labels. I can create a new label in here. Uh, for example, if I want to create a new field, uh, that, that might be something like payment terms. Um, I can go ahead and create a new field called payment terms, and you'll see it, it, it's probably added to the bottom of the list here. Uh, you can also reorder this list and move things around if you wanted to. So I, I can go ahead and, and do that, and I'll move payment terms up here. And uh, I don't know if there's any payment terms in this particular document, but let's assume that uh, there was something that I needed to label. Uh, it's just a question of essentially highlighting the text that I really want to, to label uh, and then selecting the, the specific field that I want to label it as. And so you'll see that that, that particular uh, term got, uh, the particular field got labeled with the value that I'm looking for. Uh, and essentially it's a question of doing this for as, as few as five documents. And that should then enable you to train a, a custom journal model. Uh, so in this case, it's the, what I'm dealing with is a few different contracts. Um, and you can see that each of these contracts are different because they're all sort of like with a completely different structure, diff different uh, style, uh, written by probably different entities. And as a result, are, are significantly different. Uh, but I'm still extending uh, this. I'm still using the exact same model to extract the the key value pairs that I'm really interested in, in this case, like what are the different parties? Uh, and I'm also trying to do some things around clause identification as well to, to really extract some clauses. So uh, this, you know, with this, I can go ahead and label a doc label as few as five documents, go ahead and uh, train a model. And let's go look at what the experience looks like when, uh, when I have a model trained, I can go and uh, now I'm gonna try to analyze a particular document. So I'm gonna go find a document here that I can use to analyze. Uh, this is a document that I used with the same training data set, but it's not something that, that the model has ever seen before. So it's not, not a document that the model is, uh, is, has ever looked at. And when I, when I go ahead and use that document and analyze it, I will get a similar set of results like what we saw when we were using the general document model, for example. Right? So you'll see that I can get all the different key value pairs that I, were, I was able to identify as part of the, the label data set. But I also get all of the things that were sort of part of the model from, for example, from layout as well as uh, the read options, right? Uh, so it's essentially think of it as a aggregation uh, of models. So, so what you're looking at is, is, is a combination of the, the output from both read, layout, as well as the custom model that I'm running here. And this is cool um, because this is really unstructured data. Yeah. It's not, it's, that's the coolest part. 
this is yeah, exactly right. So, so each of these document types was different. You know, th this particular document, for example, that we we just analyzed is significantly different from uh, from the other documents that we looked at. But you know, what you're seeing here, for example, is the the model is able to extract all of the different uh, fields that I was looking for. So, <clears throat> excuse me. So I've got a party that that I I've labeled that that I'm looking for as party one. I've got the alias for party one. I've got party two that, that I was looking for as part of the document. I've also got the alias of party two, the agreement date, um, you know, and, and I, I can also extract clauses, right? So it's not just about extracting specific fields. I can go find the specific clause. So in this case, I'm looking for a force majeure clause. And, and I see that the force majeure clause is on page 19 of this document. So in each of the samples, force majeure clause may have been on different pages and different uh, sort of uh, sequences within each of those documents. And the model is able to identify what I'm specifically looking for and extract the right values depending on what the uh, what the specific uh, labels describe uh, without without relying primarily on the structure of the document. So and that's cool. Yeah. I, I mean, it's it's basically now. Sorry to interrupt, but I just an observation I, that as form recognizer has become more mature, the documents that it's able to process have become increasingly messier, which is really cool. That is correct, right? And, and, and in addition to that, right? So if you think about like most organizations, ours is no exception. Unstructured documents is becoming the norm in terms of like how how organizations have to deal with this this variety of data problem, right? And with form recognizer and with the, with the new custom neural models, this is essentially the the future of like how we assume customers are going to want to to extract uh, all the different key points that they want to extract from each of these different document types that they have to deal with. Th this is amazing. Uh, so, anything else you want to show us, or where can people go to find out more? Um, yeah, so I'm glad you asked. There's actually a link at the bottom of the page that you can go look at. That uh, that 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 should be the the form recognizer documentation link that that shows you what's new in form recognizer today. Uh, in addition to that, I just wanted to call out that there's a number of other enhancements or improvements that uh, that if you're interested in, please go check it out. Uh, for example, I'll talk about um, things like uh, the pre-built models. We've got a number of new pre-built models as well in terms of uh, you know things that you can you can try out. Uh, the W2 model is an example of uh, you know, for if you've got a tax or or a uh, sort of income verification scenario, the W2 model is a great way for for you to automate some of those processing. Uh, we also have a new a model for health insurance cards. Uh, so each of these models is essentially intended to help you solve a specific business need uh, dealing with a specific document type. Uh, but there's also a wide variety of updates in terms of you know languages that we support. We're now up to 164 different languages with read and layout. Uh, where uh, you know in terms of uh, languages that are supported within custom models as well as languages that are uh, actually languages that are supported with pre-built models. Uh, we've now extended to uh, sort of Latin-based languages like German, Dutch, uh, French, Italian, and, uh, and Spanish. Uh, and we've also got a number of other improvements in terms of uh, both the SDKs, APIs, as well as latency improvements. So, so there's a there's a ton to unpack. There's lots more that, that I can share, but I know we're running out of time, so I'll stop there and, and, and turn back over to you. I mean, that's, that's cool. Uh, make sure you go to the link. It should be just below. I don't know. It feels like uh, this is the kind of AI that actually helps businesses up level the kind of work we're doing. Instead of like taking a little form and then typing it into Excel, we can just have the computer do it for us so we can work on what's really important to our business, which is really cool. Thanks for being with us, my friend. Oh, thank you, Seth. It's, it's, been, it's been my pleasure. All right. So, my friends, you've been learning all about the latest from Azure Form Recognizer with my good friend, Vinod Kurpad. Thank you so much for watching, and hopefully we'll see you next time. Take care.